Hi, I'm John and welcome to today's video, which I'm going to attempt to show you some of the basic configuration of the two servo eight input or output sketch that you've seen so far. I will just remind you though, the sketch is still a work in progress and we hope to lock down the final version of it, which will make it easier for people to be able to download the sketch and then install it into an Arduino Nano using the documentation that I've already put on the wiki page on my GitHub repository. I must stress that without the help of David Harris, I would not have gotten this far. So a big thank you goes out to David. It's been very good that I've received a number of private messages through email asking me, well, why is it it's chopping and changing so much? And I will answer that by at the moment, because I've been looking at different approaches and suddenly seeing this with LCC and the fact that it's an open source project, I think this will move on very quickly when more people see this and see the libraries who are more proficient coders than myself, they will be able to then push even further on with LCC and Arduinos or even ESP32s or Raspberry Pi Picos. The list of microcontrollers that you can use is grown within David's libraries. So it certainly is very positive. To make this as easy as possible, my plan is to make this available and it's purely for use with the Arduino Nano and the MCP2515 module that I show. Obviously, you could change the code a bit if you wished and made it for others, but I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. So you only need to amend two, two lines of code, basically, if you adopt this system. And this is this one here, which you would obviously have your own number. And then all you have to do is increment this up one every time you create a new node. And then there's this one here, which is used for the factory reset. So we set this to one for the first time you upload it, then change it to zero, upload it again, and then you're ready to start using the configuration tool or the CDI. So obviously we go to LCC, configure node, and here's the node. And I want to double click on this and we'll hit load. Now this is a blank node, so it's as would come in set up. Now there are a few things I'm hoping to change within this screen, uh, which will possibly be released in the next few days or weeks, I'm not sure. But basically what we've got here is an improved slider. And this one here is used for your servo speed. So you can adjust this and you'll see it went yellow and automatically then went back to white. So it's automatically saved the new speed for us. Then we come to our servos. So this node has been set up with two servos, servo one, servo two. You can put your description in here. So in this case, T1. Here you'll see you've got the position one. So I'm going to say that's going to be the closed position and here you can see it says zero now i'm again looking to change this slider because i'd like it to start at 90 for the first time now what we can do next is we can go to here and we can change position three and we move this down to here and again that has been written now at this point the servo has not moved so to get the servo to move for the first time, we will go to here and trigger it. And now the servo is moving at the speed that we set here. Unfortunately, I do not have a second camera available to show that happening. But what we can do is if that wasn't enough, we can now alter position one. And as you do this, as you release it, it is updating the servo position as you move the slider. So as I say, the plan is for the next version of the code, this will start off with position one and three, near enough 90. 
and I felt this was a good move to make sure that you don't end up accidentally moving your servo too far or not enough and damaging your turnouts. The next section we've got is our inputs and outputs. So again, I'm going to call, and in my case, P4 is IO1. So P4, just to make it so I know what it is. We then have our drop down box here. So in default, it's now set to none. So you can choose it as an input, an input inverted, input with pull up, input with pull up inverted, an output and an output inverted. So in this case, I'm going to set it as an output. The next thing I want to do is I want the LED to flash when we send the event to it. So I'm going to set it to about here. I'll do the same roughly here. And then to make that work, we need to click on Save Changes. But then what we can do is we scroll down to here and we click Trigger. Now, unfortunately, you can't see this because I'm not on camera. So you'll have to just take my word. The LED on pin 4 is now flashing. We can change the rate it's flashing by moving this. And this will automatically update on the fly. And you can do this. So that's the easy way of doing an output. But what we can do is say on pin 2. So in my case that is pin 5. I could put this. And I personally would say. I would use it as an input with a pull up. Now we've got here a number of different things we can choose. So depending on what you set this at, I'm going to suggest we keep it as a steady state, which is zero. You could use pulse states and others. Now I have asked for a slight change to this selection here. So we can use a toggle. So we could press a button. And it will toggle the state to allow us to have one button that would control the servo. So we press the button once and the servo would move to the thrown position. Press it a second time, it will come to the closed position. But as I say, that's uh, for the next release of the code. Now what we could do, we could use this here. So position 1. If we were to copy this and we pasted it into the on event, which is here, so paste, you'll see now it's put some more information here. And then if we go to here and we copy this, we can now go to the next bit, which is I need to scroll down, is then here we need to paste it into this. And now, so when we press the button, it'll move the servo to one position. When we release it, it'll move back to the other. Now, the other thing we can do here, we can make it a turnout. And that will then appear in JMRI. So, so we can press the button on our mimic panel to move the servo. Or we could click on the turnout within JMRI. Obviously, you can see here, these have stayed yellow because the way it works. So what you need to do is save the changes. So the next thing I will point out is if we go to the more here, I would suggest you do update complete. And then that's your system set up for you. Now it's very basic what I've shown here. And there is more we could do if we had a second node on the bus. So this would allow us to do some testing within our layout. Anyway, I've gone on for a little bit longer than I normally would, and I hope this helps you to see what is potentially coming up with this type of node.